Hey everyone, it's Byron again here to testify for Jesus Christ. I um, wanted to share with you this morning just uh, some things that I believe God put on my mind this week. Just some examples of some things that uh, uh, I have seen in my life that I'd like to share with you just so that maybe it would be helpful in understanding uh, some of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so today we're going to go off into left field a little bit, but I promise you I'm coming back. Um, and I, I wanted to share with you uh, an experience that I had growing up as a kid and getting on into my adulthood. And that was that I, I was a big baseball fan. And when I was a young kid, I, I really idolized a guy named Johnny Bench. He was a catcher for the Cincinnati Reds. And at a very early age, I actually saved up. We used to have these things called green stamps. And uh, <clears throat> I saved up enough green stamps one time uh, that I was able to buy a catcher's mitt. And throughout my life, I was a catcher uh, playing baseball. I was able to get a scholarship uh, playing baseball for school. And then at one point in time, I had the opportunity to, to uh, attend the tryouts for the Cincinnati Reds. Now, I had spent my whole life uh, preparing for this moment. Um, I had put my all into it from early age up to the time that I was uh, at, at this tryout. And just the year before I went to this tryout, I had actually put on 20 pounds muscle. I mean, I was working out hard, I was running hard, I was hitting sometimes two, 300 baseballs a day and throwing ball and doing everything possible within myself to make sure I was playing at the top of my game. So the day came for the tryout, and I, they had us do several different events during the day, and you know, hitting and running and throwing down to second base and things like that. <clears throat> and then the time came toward the end of the day in which the scout for the Cincinnati Reds pulled me off to the side individually. He had a clipboard and some pieces of paper there, and he pulled up my name and had all these little marks on the page, and he, he began to share with me what he saw in me and he, he went down step by step there were some things that I did well enough to play professional baseball but there were some other things that I wasn't wasn't good enough at or at least that particular day I didn't perform at the level he needed to see me to move on to the big leagues but as he was telling me the shortcomings that he saw in my mind, I was realizing, Mr. Scout, you saw the best I got today. And if what you saw today ain't good enough, now this is what I was thinking, I wasn't saying this out loud. But I said, if, if what you saw today isn't good enough, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do to be good enough to make it to the big leagues. Now, I was thinking that. I didn't say that to him. He was saying to me, well, if you work harder on this, you can do that. If you do a little more of this, you know, maybe talk with your coach. My coach at the time was named Fricky. And uh, maybe you can, can make it. But mentally in my mind, I realized that's the best I got right there. And uh, so we parted ways that day on it baseball field and me never never once knowing that I'm never once questioning that I wouldn't have the ability or that I would have the ability to make get to the big leagues I knew from that moment forward the rest of my life the ones that make it to the big leagues are a higher level than me in life in the gospel of Jesus Christ we see a similar picture, a similar story. The scout, the judge, is God. And he has certain criteria that he expects to be followed. They're laws. He gave them to the children of Israel early on in the book of Exodus. And the the promise to the children of Israel, if you obey me, I'll make you a kingdom of priests. 
But they weren't able to do it. They, they fell short every time. In my life today, I live under a different covenant. I don't live under the covenant that was given back in Exodus, in which we obey laws. I live under a new covenant. Now, I want to go back to that baseball conversation and, and, and just share with you a difference. And, and in this conversation, I want you to imagine that the scout is God. And I'm still a person here on earth trying to make it to the big leads or heaven. So the scout was standing there in front of me with this clipboard and he already had this list of things he was looking for and whether or not I measured up to that list of things. And there were some areas that I did measure up in. And there's some times in our life when we, we, we can say to each other, ourselves actually, I'm not as bad as that guy. Look what he did. He did that. But yet when the judge looks at us according to his rules, his laws, he finds no one able to measure up to the standards. The standards are very, very high should you be subjected to the law. But what if that scout would have looked at me that day as there was that period of silence and I was thinking, I'm never going to be good enough. And he was thinking, Byron, you're unworthy to make it to the big leagues. What if that scout would have looked at me and said, but there's another way. And I was like, what do you mean another way? We do have this one perfect player. And Byron, if you will believe in that one perfect player who is Jesus Christ, your belief, your faith in Jesus Christ will get you righteousness. So all these laws that I have here, they're done away with. Because your faith in Him, your belief in Him, and His righteousness is the way. So you may have never thought about it. You could have made it to the big leagues based on the criteria that we have. But if you believe on Him, you're going. That is a story from in my life that God actually put it on my heart yesterday. He's like, man, I knew I wasn't good enough to make the big leagues. And I gave up. The amazing thing is the parallel in life. There are people who aren't willing to give up and accept the grace of God. <laughs> Giving up is part of the key. Dying to self is part of the key. Being crucified with Christ is part of the key. Now, I would invite you to do what I call a word study. Now, I, I actually study the Bible, the King James Version. I refuse to entertain any other edition. And I have a concordance, a Strong's concordance. And when a word in King James confuses me a little bit, I'm like, what were they saying? I go to the Greek or the Hebrew word, and there's an explanation for exactly what the picture is. It's a very helpful tool for me. But if you were to do a word study on the flesh and limit it to the flesh that Paul speaks about in the New Testament, the flesh is that part of us that is not willing to give up, not willing to accept 
that we're not good enough. The flesh will have us thinking, I can do this. The bottom line is, I can't, you can't. However, there is one who has already done that. And your faith in him imputes righteousness. His righteousness is good for the remission of sin. And if you go to look at, at Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. There's a very narrow road once again. Um, and we're going to go some other places, but I, I, I want to mention uh, once you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in that you can't make this, you're hell bound and you accept Jesus Christ as your savior and are justified before a holy God in Jesus Christ. There's some tricks out there. There's some tricksters out there that are working for Satan who will take you from the point that you gave up and said, I can't, but he can't right out of that setting and say, now you can do this. <laughs> now, if you look in the book of Galatians, Paul very beautifully laid this out. There's one verse in there. He says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Did you receive the spirit from the hearing of faith or from the law? And I'll put the caption up here because I'm sure I didn't get that verse just right. But once you receive Christ by faith, if you turn back to that law and say, okay, Jesus, say amen. Now I can do that. You're frustrating the gospel of Jesus Christ. You receive this salvation, justification by faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is placed into your life and at that moment I can tell you I've got a video I did one time do you remember that moment when you feel the weight of the world coming off you it's a supernatural act of God now, there are false professions of faith in which that doesn't happen but there are professions of faith that that does happen but turning back to the law and saying I must do this I must do that is not in the plan Paul that's the whole almost the whole basis of the letter of to the Galatian church is that you didn't receive anything except by faith and now you're gonna turn around and try to live by the law it don't work now don't confuse me I am not saying we will not live holy we will not live sin you know, sin is a problem with the flesh, but with the spirit, no. There will be a time when a Christian will sin. There will be a time when something happens and they get caught up and there's, there's an issue. However, the battle is not, I can do this. The battle is, where is my faith? Do I have my faith planted firmly in Jesus Christ? And is he my only hope that allows the Holy Spirit to continue a work in you? Hopefully that is helpful to some of you. Um, you know, I've, I've put on comment approval um, that if you were to make a comment on a video, I'm going to approve it before it goes forward. Um, 
if, if there's some of you out there that are thinking this, what you're talking about, Byron, is outlandish. It's, there's no way this could be or anything like that. Let me invite you to listen for a while. Um, the flesh, which is that part of us that feels like I can do something, is very, very powerful. And it causes us to think the true message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we're not hearing it correctly. Because the flesh wants to rise up and do, do, do great and wonderful things and be respected by man. Or at least where we can say, see, look at me. I'm perfect. It is by the grace of God that anyone, anyone has a chance. So that's about all I got for today. Um, I thank you for uh, tuning in. I, I hope that you would be aware that there are, there are wolves in sheep's clothing out there. And as soon as they say the word Jesus, they're, they're speaking about another Jesus, man. They are, they're not talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you find in the Holy Scriptures. They're not talking to you about him. They're talking about somebody else. So, love you all. I uh, pray the blessings of God in your life, man. And if you have questions, uh, concerns, anything like that, feel free to contact me just by sending me a message on YouTube, Facebook, anything like that. I guarantee you I may not have the answer. However, I'll know some friends or have some friends that are walking by faith daily, and they can help. There's multitudes of people out there. So.